Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I am very excited to do today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about my 10 favorite luxury purchases of 2022. So let's just dive right into it. I am going to go from uh, brands I have fewer items to, to the one I have the most from, which I don't think any of you who have seen uh, my previous videos will be surprised at which brand comprises most of these or half of these 10 items, I should say. So with that, let's get right into it. So item number one is the Gucci Ophidia shoulder bag. I love this bag. This is a surprise for me. There are two surprises in this video. Um, I'm surprised that I love it as much as I do. I was in Vienna in July. I have a video on that. But because of the exchange rate and the dollar being so strong and how they price items, it is like the bargain basement over there. So I really wanted to make sure I picked something up in Vienna. Um, I went into Louis Vuitton, Dior, and Gucci, and I thought, I really want something from Gucci. This is my only Gucci item. So I looked at several different bags there and ultimately settled on this. At the time, I'm not sure if the price is still the same, but the summer of 2022, this retailed in the U.S. for $1,050 plus taxes. I got it in Vienna for $740 total. So I saved with taxes over $500. So I love this bag. I'm surprised that I use it as much as I do. It is a taller, thinner bag, but it's still a small bag, but it holds a whole ton. I love the Ophidia print. They have this in uh, blue as well, a blue and red stripe, blue leather, and the blue GG web print. I wanted to get something in the classic Gucci brown monogram. I'm so happy I did. I use this bag all the time. It is just a fantastic bag. And in terms of price for a luxury handbag, it is really low priced. Um, so it's kind of a win-win on that front. The things I love about it, I love this big zipper pocket in the front. Uh, this is a perfect place to put your cell phone. This holds the biggest iPhone, no problem. I also just love the look of it. It is just so classic Gucci and so beautiful. It's so well made. I'm not crazy that the shoulder strap does not detach. But if I get another bag from Gucci that has a detachable shoulder strap that matches this, I might remove this strap. So that's the one downside. I don't like that it doesn't have a detachable shoulder strap. Uh, the zipper's nice and smooth. And then on the inside, you have a zipper compartment back here, which also holds the biggest iPhone. And you have a rather useless slip pocket here in the front. It is very small and it is very loose. So I tried having that be my lip balm spot, but it falls out. Uh, so this really isn't useful to me, this little slip pocket here in the front. I wish they had made it tighter and deeper, then it would be more useful. But with an interior and exterior slip pocket, I really don't have a need for that front slip pocket. So it's not that big of a deal to me. Um, doesn't have feet on the bottom, but the web print continues, of course, on the back as well. And it's got these nice leather accents. And all in all, I just think this is such a beautiful bag. And to me, I've seen this a couple times when I've been out and about here. And the beauty really comes through to me when I see it on other people because I'm seeing it at a short distance, but at a distance. And I just think, wow, that bag is gorgeous. So first uh, love of 2022 was the Ophidia shoulder bag. Now these are not in order of purchases, so I shouldn't have said first love of 2022, but absolutely uh, one of my best purchases uh, this year. Next, we are going to move on to Dior. Um, so you're all not going to be surprised to see this again. This is the, uh, sorry, that got a little wonky when I set it down, but this is the Dior small camp bag in the 
uh, blue oblique print. It is just such a stunner of a bag. It is gorgeous. It's embroidered. I absolutely love this bag. It was my birthday gift to myself this year. Um, what I love about it is the hardware is just so sturdy, so gorgeous in this champagne gold. I hope I'm holding this at an angle you all can see it. And then of course the embroidery on the inside, it does come with these two flaps. Um, it, it, it's pictured with them out like this. Um, and I've seen it also pictured on the Dior website with them tucked in. I tuck them in and it kind of seals uh, the edge here where the flap comes down and they don't get in the way. But on the inside, it's just the reverse of the outside. There's no lining, there's no pockets of any kind. Uh, you can see there is a shoulder strap in here that uh, matches the bag that has uh, Christian Dior all down it. Is that upside down? No. Um, it's a nice length. Won't work as crossbody for me, but I don't really need it to. Um, so it's got that nice shoulder strap. I have an organizer in here that I actually bought for my Pouchette Matisse. I did not like how it worked in that bag, but it works perfectly in this bag and keeps compartments um, creates, I should say, compartments for organization. So this is one of my most loved bags. I do carry this all the time. It is not coated, like the, unlike the Gucci that's coated, this is not coated. Um, so you do have to be a little bit extra careful with this because any liquid that spills on it would soak right in. But I did hear, and I'm not sure if this is true, that Dior does uh, free dry cleaning. So I'm not overly babying my bags, but I am conscious with this one. I certainly never set this one on the ground. Um, it usually just hangs from a chair if I have it when I'm at a restaurant, or um, you could even set it on the table because it is relatively small. And then I also have some of those hooks where you hang from a table and your bag can hang. So this is my only Dior handbag. I love it. Um, I just think it is absolutely a perfect bag. My next item is also Dior and I got this to go with it. And this is the um, saddle flap card holder. I love that it has the little D for Dior there. I love it that it's in the saddle style on the back here, and I will say it is in the uh, blue oblique, but you can see it's a little bit different of an oblique pattern than this bag or the book totes, the, the lettering here, the Dior lettering is thinner, but that's okay. It still uh, goes well with that. On the back side here, it has a card slot where I keep my ID, and then it has a button closure here uh, and when I open that up, you can see it says Christian Dior there. It's leather lined and it has three card slots here. I usually put, uh, I carry three cards with me, my debit card and two credit cards. So I put my debit card in the front one, the two credit cards in the middle one, and then in the back one, I fold up cash. What I love most about this, other than it's Dior and it's the oblique pattern that I love so much, is how thin and compact it is. Um, it holds exactly what I need and it fits easily in all my small bags. So this is the Dior saddle flap card holder in the oblique. Now we are going to move on to Fendi. This here is my only Fendi bag as of yet. This is the bag at soft trunk in the Suzuka print. This is in the men's line. Uh, the only items that are in the men's line that I have are the Gucci bag I showed you, this and my next item. Um, so this is in the men's line. I love this. It is like structured and firm. It offers versatility in how you can carry it. You can carry it by this top handle here in brown leather. You can carry it as a clutch bag. And it also comes with a thick and long, and this is so great for any men out there watching this. Oftentimes, at least for me, 
I have a problem getting any shoulder strap to work as a crossbody. This is the longest shoulder strap of any bag in my collection. It extends beyond what I need it to extend to, to wear it crossbody. And I'm six foot, I've got a little extra weight on me too. So if I do want to wear a bag crossbody, this works wonderfully. I typically wear my bags just over the shoulder, but sometimes if I'm in an area, not in my city, but I'm traveling and I'm in an area I'm not familiar with, I'll wear it crossbody just to feel a little bit uh, more secure. So the shoulder strap is in black. Um, it's a fabric material and it's got silver hardware and brown uh, leather trimming on there, as you can see. And it does match the brown leather trimming on the bag and the silver hardware as well. You can see the shoulder uh, D-rings here to attach the shoulder strap. And then on the top handle there, it does have these studs here to keep that in place and matching studs here that all say Fendi. And then it's got the classic double F uh, magnetic closure here. When we open it up, it's got a fair amount. There's six card slots there, which is great because if you use this, you do not need a card holder or wallet. I put my four, three, three cards and ID, and it also works for folding up a bit of cash in these slots as well. And it is microfiber lined and then just a big open space. This just holds everything I need, like with no spare room, I can get a pair of my phone, sunglasses, reading glasses, and a few other bits and bobs that I need without any room to spare, but it is still just a wonderful piece. I absolutely love it. I used it in Mexico a few months ago and it really worked perfectly. So this is the Fendi Baguette Soft Trunk. The next item, as I mentioned, is the final item of, well, maybe not actually, there might be one more, but these were also, of course, in the men's section and these are the Fendi multicolor fabric slides. I went into Fendi intent on looking at a different pair of sandals and I had seen these on the website when I was looking at, I think they're called the Flow Sandals, Fendi Flow. I saw these on the website but when I saw them in person they looked so much better. And I thought, am I wasting money here buying a pair of sandals? I wear sandals at every opportunity, but you know, these aren't cheap. I think they were around 650. So that is expensive for a pair of sandals. And I wear so uh, sandals so much. I was worried, is there gonna be a lot of wear and tear on these? Are they gonna be comfortable? The answer to that was no and yes. I took these to Vienna with me this summer. I wore them every day for eight days from sun up to sun down. We walked eight to 12, 13 miles every day. A lot of that was on gravel. Um, there's a lot of parks and gardens in Vienna, which is one of the reasons I love that city so much. Um, but uh, a lot of the paths are gravel paths and there is absolutely no wear whatsoever on the soles of these sandals. They are so well made and they were surprisingly very, very comfortable. So I absolutely love these. I'm so glad I got them. And I do not think getting a pair of luxury sandals is a waste or a mistake. You know, you always think when you buy things like these and things like this, that it doesn't take many of these items to add up to the cost of a nice bag, but I'm so glad that I have these and bummer that it's winter because I really can't wear them even here. We do occasionally though get really warm days in the winter. So as soon as that presents itself, I will be wearing these again. And then they do say Fendi Roma on the soles and then also on the heel there maybe upside down, I don't know. No, it's not upside down. But these are super, super great quality and I think they were worth every penny. 
Next, we're gonna move on to the last brand I have and to no one's surprise, that is gonna be Louis Vuitton. So the first Louis Vuitton best purchase of 2022 was my um, on-the-go GM in the reverse monogram. I absolutely love this bag. Now that we're back into the office three days a week, I'm trying to use other bags for work, but I use this almost every day and I carry it loaded by the top handle. It is heavy, but I am, I've really gotten used to carrying it by the top handle. It does come with two black leather straps that fold up down inside. So you can carry it by the shoulder, but I carry it by the handle. It's about an eight minute, 10 minute walk to the subway station on the way to work. It's 30 seconds from the subway station to my office. So it's doable for carrying it by the handle heavy for short amount of time. I love that it has the giant monogram and the giant monogram reverse. And then on the sides, it has the regular monogram and the regular monogram in the reverse. And inside it is this beautiful red fabric lining. It does have a zipper pocket in the back that I really just put masks in, I think. Actually, I do have an organizer that I use. I did take it out, but really this zipper pocket here, the one downside is when the organizer's in there and it's tough, this strap does get in the way of getting in and out of that zipper pocket. So I usually just keep some extra masks in there. Um, you really should have an organizer with this bag because it is just a big hole. But this is such a beautiful piece and I just love carrying it and it feels so good to carry it. It does not have feet on the bottom, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but I'm careful with where I set this down. It really only goes on the floor here and in my office. Uh, but this is just a wonderful work bag and I love how they have the regular monogram with the reverse here and the reverse monogram handles with the regular giant monogram there. So this is just a beautiful piece. I am sorry that was rather loud, but I am so happy I got this. This is just a great work and travel bag. I've also used it on a flight, but depending on how the um, attachments to the seats in front of you are configured on an airplane, you really need to be careful that it fits under the seat in front of you. So you have to do some research, but this is the on the go GM. The next Louis Vuitton item that I absolutely love are the Waimea sunglasses. So I did, I think, do a video on this, but you can see there it's got the monogram on the lenses and the light really just has to hit it right for that monogram to show up. I did get it in this brown color. It says Louis Vuitton on the side there and it also says it on the inside. And I think these are just wonderful sunglasses. And like the Fendi sandals, the most important thing is comfort and these are so comfortable. They feel so well made and so sturdy, but they also feel so light when you have them on your face. And I just absolutely love the monogram. So I love that touch there with the monogram pattern on the lenses. I think they are just absolutely beautiful. And Louis Vuitton also gives you a nice fabric bag to hold them in as well as this uh, blue rectangular, nice, sturdy case here. This fits in some bags, not most of them. I can't fit, you know, this in here or some of my other small bags, but I certainly use this and put them in with this so they don't get scratched. But these were such a good, good purchase. I absolutely love them. Next item is gonna be no surprise. This is the one that started the Louis Vuitton craze, the Pochette Matisse in reverse monogram. I think this is one of my most beautiful bags. I absolutely love it. It's also one of the most functional and practical bags I have with the zipper pocket on the back, which allows you to fit your phone in for easy access. 
top handle there in black leather, so it doesn't have the shuttle leather, so it's good to go in the rain. Um, you can carry it by the top handle. I never do that. I use the shoulder strap that attaches uh, there to each side, and then it does fan out. Uh, so you can cram a lot of stuff in here. I do not put anything that changes this profile, um, but it fits everything I absolutely need. It's got the S-lock closure here. You just push together to pop it open. And then it's got the front compartment, a larger middle compartment, and a back slip compartment. And there you can see the shoulder strap is in reverse monogram canvas. Really, really nice shoulder strap. It does have several uh, um, lengths you can have it at. And uh, the holes are protected by nice metal hardware. I think this bag is absolutely fantastic. It is one of my favorites and one of the most useful and practical bags I have in my collection. And I absolutely love the reverse monogram. I think it really just adds something really beautiful to this piece. The ninth piece is my Louis Vuitton carry-all. Um, this does come with a lock and a key. It comes with a strap you can attach to keep your handles together, which I don't use. It does come with a functioning uh, luggage tag where you can put your information in. It is in the classic monogram with a lot of Vachetta leather here. You can see it. Top handles, luggage tags, straps down the, down the front and back slip pockets on the two sides lined with fachetta leather. Then it's got fachetta leather lining throughout it. So it does have a lot of fachetta leather. I I don't like to use fachetta leather in the rain um, because I worry about getting a ton of water spots on it, but I have no qualms about water spots um, if they're minimal. Um, or other wear on Vachetta. I think it uh, gives the character to the bag and when it patinas, it's uh, really beautiful. The reason I bought this is because of all these other little smaller bags because usually when I fly, well, not usually because not anymore, but in the past when I would fly, I would use just what fits under the seat in front of me. Well, I'm not gonna check bags like this in my check luggage. So I bought this to basically house other bags for when I travel and a few other bits and bobs, um, but it's great. Uh, and on the inside, it does not come with a shoulder strap, but on the inside, it has a slip pocket back there. And then it is just in the brown fabric lining and it is spacious and it holds a lot. I did buy a leather, Vachetta, Vachetta leather strap on Amazon where you can attach it to the shoulder straps, or excuse me, the handles there and carry it over the shoulder. So I have done that because it can get heavy when you have a lot in it. I also have an organizer for this bag because I have occasionally uh, used it to uh, as a work bag. Um, so this is the Louis Vuitton carry-all. I just love all the monogram. It is so beautiful. I absolutely love this bag. I was deciding on this or a Keepall 45. I like the carry-all better because of those two external pockets. I just think it's um, more of a, a city bag than strictly a travel bag. The last item is the one that was the biggest surprise to me. I can't believe it. It is probably my favorite purchase of the year, and that is the Louis Vuitton Speedy 25 in the bandolier. Bandolier means strap. They have uh, Speedies with straps or without straps. I wanted the option to carry this over the shoulder, and that's how I mostly use it with the shoulder strap on it. Um, what's interesting is I had looked at the Speedy 25 and the 30 back in April, the day before I ended up buying the Clooney, and I decided against the Speedy. Now, the common things you hear about the Speedy are 
everyone has it, it's basic. Those aren't the reasons why I thought I would never have a Speedy. The reasons I thought I would never have a Speedy are because it's not the most beautiful bag and it's not the most interesting bag. So I thought, I'm not gonna spend the money on a Speedy when I can apply it towards something else. The Speedy is really on the low end in terms of Louis Vuitton handbag pricing. I think this is around 1800, and if you get the non-bandolier version, it's even cheaper. Then I started watching a lot of videos about the Speedy and from a lot of YouTubers I love. Like every time people talk about the Speedy, I love it. It's my favorite bag. It's one of my favorite bags. And you know, I don't care if someone thinks I'm basic or a handbag I have is basic. I don't care that everybody has it. There's a reason everybody has it. It's just like the Neverfull. It is a great bag. It is small enough to use for every day. And because of the design of it, it holds a ton of stuff. I absolutely love it. Um, just a little lesson for those of you that might not know. This was basically created at Audrey Hepburn's request. She loved the keep alls, the big travel duffel bags and she had requested that Louis Vuitton make her a version, a smaller version that she can use every day, and that's how the Speedy was born. It also comes with a lock and a key. It's got these nice Vachetta top handles. There you can see the D-rings to attach the shoulder strap. Of course, there's no feet on the bottom, but that doesn't bother me, uh, especially with a small shoulder bag. I do have it picked, packed up. My mom is coming in later this week and I didn't want to film in front of her. So I pre-filmed this, but it is packed up with most of the stuff I need when I go pick her up at the airport. It does have a fairly small opening, but I don't have any issues getting in and out. It does have a D-ring inside where you could hang keys or the lock from. And then on the back, it has a very small zipper pocket here. I don't really use that for anything. Sometimes I'll put a lip balm in there, but it's really, really too small to hold anything really practical. But this is my favorite purchase. It's not my favorite bag, absolutely not, but it is my favorite purchase of this year. And I do wanna add a Speedy 30 to my collection as well. I took this to Mexico as my underseat carry-on uh, because I decided not to bring my iPad and it was absolutely the best underseat carry-on. So there you have it, Speedy 25 Bandolier. It is a fantastic bag. I understand why everyone has it, and I understand why most people rave about it. Uh, so there you have it, my 10 favorite luxury purchases of 2022. Uh, let me know your thoughts below. As always, I love when you all comment on my videos. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new here and you enjoyed this and you love handbags, please consider subscribing. If you are a returning subscriber, I really mean it. I am very grateful for your support. Uh, this whole YouTube journey has been really amazing. Thank you. Happy holidays, everyone, and I will see you soon.